He snaps off a nice little breaking ball here and freezes, gets the guy swinging, you know, nice, nice mound presence, Holly, you know, he does this, you know, the confident strut like he expects it coming off the mound. But first thoughts of, of young Hayden Keller. Well, I mean, really, the first thing that I see there now, that's an elevated breaking ball. Uh, you know, the, the hitter himself looked to me like he was probably thinking fastball, got a breaking ball and was out in front. You can see the barrel that was uh, a, a little yep. bit in front of the baseball there. So he was fooled by the pitch. But that does really speak to a lot of what you see in, in, in high school. Um, this this is a pitch that's going to be very valuable to this young man. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of drop. I mean, you see it. He, he comes straight over the top. <clears throat> you know, we, you hear the, you know, the 12 to 6 curveball. I mean, there's a little tilt in there as the kind of ball got back to the outside part of the plate. But that 12 to 6 drop is, is very, very valuable. And as he gets older and gets stronger and develops more, in, 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 yes, you're going to hear me say this, spin rate. This ball is going to become a little bit more electric for him, and that's really what he's going to have to work on. As you see it out of his hand, it's a good pitch. It's already got some drop, but as a hitter, you see that big. When he gets a little bit more life towards the end of that pitch, then it's going to be really nasty, and it's going to really serve him well. Um, again, this is a young man, as you said. I believe he's a sophomore in high school. Is that yeah, correct? Right? Grade. So yeah, He's a young man, so you know the sky's the limit. And, and I'm always a firm believer in this. I've said it a million times. I'll say it again today. I think I said it last week. But I love kids that learn how to pitch early, and then we start to develop their strength, literally their strength as they move along. When I talk about spin rate, that's something that's going to come along. He's not going to have a ton of spin rate right now as he's still maturing into his body, as you know he's starting to fill in the space between the bones and he's growing. I'm sure he looks uh, he looks like he's fairly tall and he's already grown, maybe had a little bit of a growth spurt. Uh, but with that being said, he's going to get stronger. He's going to get better. He's going to understand it. And the more he does it, he's going to get better with it. But to see him at an early age with a solid secondary pitch, that's a testament to where he's at. Somebody's taught him that, and that's going to serve him well moving forward. Um, you know, we all would love to say, yeah, we throw 95 miles an hour, but the case is that most don't. And everybody's looking for ways to get guys out. That looked like a very reliable pitch for him, one that he believes in. He's certainly confident in throwing it. And as he moves forward and that pitch gets even better for him, it will automatically make his other stuff play up. And that's the thing. If you start to develop even a good secondary pitch, we talk, used to talk about this all the time in the big leagues. Trevor Hoffman was known for it. I don't know why he's the first one that comes to mind, but it was the most <laughs> uncomfortable changeup that I ever saw. You knew the changeup was coming and you still couldn't do anything about it. It was so hard to just pick up. And yet this was a guy who threw, you know, 95, 96 miles an hour when he got to the big leagues but he had one of the most devastating change-ups that we'd ever seen. I used to remember back in the day, uh, every year we would get to the end of the season and we would start talking about guys, uh, you know, who had the nastiest what, right? The, you know, every year that, you know, I think Baseball America used to do it. And, it, you know, they'd come out, who had the nastiest fastball? Who's got the nastiest slider? Who's got the nastiest split finger? And, of course, you know, there were, there were, there were guys up there that would kind of routinely be there year after year. And, and of course, Hoffman was there with the changeup. It was just an absolutely devastating pitch and you knew it was there. But the reason I even bring it up is that as devastating as that pitch was, and as much as we knew it was coming, it made his fastball play up. So as he got older in his career and he was only throwing 90, 92, um, you know, probably I would say the last five or six years of his career, he may even tell you longer. Um, it made his fastball play up because, you know, we'd get in the box and we were just so aware of this changeup that we didn't, you know, that we wanted no part of really that we were trying to defend ourselves against that you'd watch him just dot 92 mile an hour fastballs inside and outside. And it would freeze hitters because we were all up there trying to deal with his changeup because that's what we had put into the back of our minds and what we, you know, you didn't go up against Trevor Hoffman thinking, okay, well, I'm going to jump on the fastball as soon as he throws it because he'll just throw you up. I mean, it was almost like he was so good at reading hitters. Uh, which, you know, most guys who have found success in the league, they, they're they very good about that. They they will tell you that, you know, I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm going to make you go after what I want you to go after. And that's kind of the key to this. So secondary pitches are key, are very key for young young players. Uh, you know, I talk about it all the time. You got 95, 96 miles an hour. You're you're going to you're going to coast through a lot of a lot of high school baseball. You're going to dominate.